Bismillahirrahmanirrahim <coughs> Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Nesta'inuhu ve nasta'firuhu ve nu'minu bihi azze ve celle Ve eşhedü en la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike la Ve eşhedü enne Muhammeden abduhu ve rasuluhu <coughs> Sallallahu aleyhi ve sellem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'd ayyuhal muslimun With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer The praise and the thanks is for God We thank him for the gift and blessing of the model human person Muhammad the prophet, prayers and peace be upon him The honorable and noble servant and messenger of God and what follows of that salute or their traditional salutation to the last prophet, the seal of the prophets mentioned in the Bible as it is given in the Quran. <coughs> we greet you, brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. <coughs> we are grateful and thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, highly glorified most perfect and supreme is he. We thank Allah for two <clears throat> of his great mercies to mankind. The noble Quran, the generous Quran revealed to Muhammad the Prophet, the second of these great mercies, Muhammad the living mortal human being. And those of us <clears throat> who were blessed and fortunate to have lived and had the leader we had for 33 years, Imam W.D. Muhammad. We thank God for that great mercy to us, and we ask Allah to grant Imam Muhammad the highest station in the paradise. <coughs> Amen. We're grateful and honored to be here with you today and this weekend, acknowledging and honoring our pioneers showing appreciation and gratitude for our pioneers and our elders who have paved the way for so many of us. I'm very honored to be here this weekend with you here at Masjid Mu'minun in Atlanta, Georgia. <clears throat> our subject for today's khutbah or lecture in keeping with the theme of honoring our pioneers and respect for our pioneers is respect the wombs that gave you birth. Respect the wombs that gave you birth or respect the wombs that bore you. And this is taken from the fourth chapter of the Quran titled The Women, Nisa or the Women. And Imam W.D. Muhammad shared with us on many occasions that women and the picture of woman in scripture is symbolic or is anonymous to community society, community. So as we reading uh, from the chapter of the women, think about communities, think about society, think about nations. And as we read this verse from this chapter, and it relates to a small picture, and this verse is read in the Nikah, the marriage ceremony. But it's not just Muhammad the prophet, praying peace be upon him, he didn't just read it just for that small picture. That small picture is a uh, sign of the bigger picture of the community of the ummah so as we're reading this see it in that big picture and with Allah's help I will try to help us see that big picture <coughs> Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim with Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer Ya ayyuhan nas uttaqur rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma رجال كثير والنساء واتق الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا With Allah's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer O mankind or O people or O humanity and nas be regardful or reverence it says here I'm reading from Yusuf Abdul Yusuf Ali's translate, translation so I may change words here for broader meaning be regardful of your guardian evolver, your Rabb, 
who created all of you الذي خلقتكم plural who created all of you من نفس واحدة from a single soul a single essence says person but from a single soul a single essence created from it from the soul وخلقت منها from the soul because the reference is the soul created from that soul منها from it زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثير ونساء and created from the single soul of like nature you could also say of like mind of like spirit of like interests of like nature his mate and from them twain scatter like seeds many men and women and be regardful here is the respect the wombs they gave you birth and be regardful what the law and be regardful of Allah الذي تسألون به والأرحم to whom you have mutual requests mutual requests now this translation says to whom you demand your mutual rights we don't demand anything from Allah <laughs> you ask تسألون سألة means to ask a question سألة means to ask a question we don't demand anything from God we request we ask him and these are mutual requests to say aluna bihi that you ask mutually males have requests females have requests that you ask mutually can't be all one side it can't be all the way the woman wanted it can't be all the way the man wanted well arham and be regardful and be regardful respectful of the wombs alham arham that bore you or that gave you birth for surely Allah ever watches over you. Sadaqallah al God the Mighty spoke the truth. <clears throat> now, we begin with this term. I want to point out to you well, a couple of things before I get to the term. Murahima arham. Min nafsin wahida. I say put this in the context of respecting the wombs that gave you birth. So God gives us this small picture of life. And how life starts off. And we read this when two couples, two people, are getting married. This is the verse that Muhammad the Prophet ﷺ would start with. He started with that verse, chapter 4, verse 1. To show us that that union is not just a union of these two, but it's a union that's responsible for the expansion of societies, families, communities, and nations. So whatever lesson that that instruction from the Quran is given for that one picture that lesson is to be multiplied across the community the family and the nation alright so here now Allah says and I'm going to get a few few points that relates to the subject we create you min nafsin wahida created from a single soul respect the wounds that gave you birth God also says in Surah 2 Baqarah 2.13 and I'm making a connection with something can a nasa ummatan wahida and mankind was one community now you should hear min nafsin wahida can a nasa ummatan wahida alright ya yuhan nasa tukur rabbakum aladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida can a nasa ummatan wahida and God again says in surah luqman 31 28 مَا خَلْقَكُمْ وَلَا بَعْتُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاهِدَةً Three, I'm bringing to your mind. The nafsin wahida, كَانَ النَّاسَ أُمَّةٍ wahida. Mankind was one community, one ummah. كَانَ, they say, it may not necessarily the verb to be, but كَانَ means was, is, and will be. كَانَ and God says, مَا خَلَقَكُمْ وَلَا بَعْتُكُمْ إِلَّا كَنَفْسٍ وَاهِدًا And your creation or your resurrection is in no wise but as the resurrection and the creation of a single soul. Alright? So I've given you two verses that connect with respect the wounds that bore you but we started with مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاهِدًا His mate and we created from this single essence of like nature وَقَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالَكَ ثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً 
And we created from these like minds. Imam W.D. Muhammad said, find like minds and associate with like minds. That's your mate, not your wife, not your husband, but that, that partner. In, in uh, British countries, in British societies, they speak of the man as mate. They married to him now. They ain't talking no freaky stuff. They're they not talking about that. They'll say, hey, mate. Hey, mate. How you doing, mate? This is how they talk in those uh, British-speaking and English-speaking society. Hey, that's my mate. They say, that's my mate right there. That's enough. We said in the States, that's my boy. That's my man. You know, just different language. So they say, that's my mate. Hey, mate. So this language from the Quran has made its way into the culture to associate people who have like minds, to identify people who have like minds as being mates. From males and females come children. And fathers and mothers that give birth to their children, now I'm talking to you young people, but if your parents are still alive, this will apply to you also. Your mother, your father still living, this should apply to you. When your father and your mother bring you into this world, they are responsible for your life. That's why God used the term rub. They are responsible for your life to evolve you, to nurture you, to raise you, to educate you, to feed you, to clothe you. Now, if the parent has done all that for you, when you grow up and become a grown up, talking to the young folk now, you are not supposed to forget what your father did for you and you are not supposed to forget what your mother did for you. And you are not to allow anyone to speak disparaging words about your father or disparaging words about your mother. We call them when we were growing up playing the dozen. We don't play the dozen. So don't play the dozen now. All right, so you should be, and you say, well, my father wasn't there. My mother wasn't there for me. But you still had a father. You still had a mother. Somebody was there for you. So whoever that person is that was there, your guardian, you still respect that person that gave you birth. And they may not have birthed you physically, but they birthed you as a young man. They birthed you as a young woman. Taught you what it was like to be a man. Taught you what it was like to be a woman. I learned that in the Nation of Islam. I learned how to be a man in the Nation of Islam when I was 18 years old down in Jacksonville, Florida. That's why I learned how to be a man. So the womb that gave me my manhood was the Nation of Islam. And the womb that gave me my spirituality and understanding of the Quran and the life of Muhammad the Prophet and philosophy and Greek mythology and symbolism and metaphors was Imam W.D. Muhammad. <laughs> That was my father. In fact, he said as much. He said, you know, I've always regarded you as one of my sons. I said, yes, sir. And I've always regarded you as my father. Yeah. So he fathered this community. He's the father of this community. And the community is the mother. The community is the woman. And he gave birth to this community all over these United States of America. So now when the father passed away, are you going to allow anybody to disparage your father? that's no longer here, that spent 33 years making a, a Muslim out of you. Making a man out of you, 33 years he spent. Making a Muslim out of you for 33 years, and he hasn't been dead for two years, and you're going to allow someone to speak against your religious father that gave birth to this community. Menefsin <laughs> Wahida. And God says, your creation, and your creation, or your resurrection, is in no way but as the creation and the resurrection of one soul. God raised up one human being. Muhammad the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa 1400 years ago, God raised up one human being and said, this human being, Uswatun Hassanah, is the model for all human beings, male or females, that will come after him. If you want to know what a good, excellent human being is, look at Muhammad the Prophet. If you want to know what a good man is, look at Muhammad the Prophet. If you want to know what a good father and a good husband and a good businessman and a good friend and a good ambassador, yes, and even a good general in the army and compassion in the military, look at Muhammad as the model. 
Sisters, if you want to know what a good mother is, what a good daughter is, you look at Muhammad the prophet because he is not gender specific, though he was a male. What I'm talking about is inside his flesh body, not his gender. Uswa is not a gender. Uswa is a character. Uswa is a principle. Uswa is a, is a characteristic. Uswa hasana. These are principles that are supposed to be found in males and females. Yes. And sometimes the women can display them more and better than the males can. So your, your, your creation, what creation? Your flesh creation come from one family, Adam and his mate. But God is talking about something bigger than just flesh here. God is talking about how communities are evolved, how communities are developed, how nations are developed, how societies are generated and recreated. If your creation, you human beings, I'm going to show you that your creation and your resurrection. What's that for? For those of you who have died as a human being, I'm going to show you how to get back. And I'm going to give you Muhammad the prophet. And your creation and your resurrection is going to be patterned upon that one model, that one pattern. You can create all decent human beings from that pattern. And Imam Davidi Muhammad, before him his father, Am Elijah Muhammad. Oh, I did say honorable. I said it in Denver, in an immigrant community there last year, and they went crazy. Yeah. And I went crazier. <laughs> Who you my father was not my biological father my religious father so I told him you can't tell us who to say honorable to who you think you are <laughs> and I told them but but I'm gonna give you the Quranic support now I'm, I'm, I'm talking loosely but I have my, my Dalil you Dalil brothers I have my Dalil <laughs> and when I'm in Philly and Washington DC they love the Dalil 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 I say if you can spell Dalil I'll give you my Dalil and not in Arabic just spell it in English for me and I'll give it to you. But I'm going to give you the Dalil from the Quran, the proof, as they say. Burhan is the term, the proof. But I told them, I said, first of all, I'm your guest. And according to Islamic Adab, you're supposed to respect your guest and not disrespect your guest. I said, but that said, I don't owe you any explanation of how I became a Muslim. Because where were you? This is what I told the immigrants in their masjid, in their community. I said, where were you when the African Muslims were snatched and brought into the United States of America and you people in Saudi Arabia didn't stand up for us? You in Egypt didn't stand up for us. You in Pakistan didn't. I'm talking to them. I say you in Pakistan didn't stand up for us. You in India didn't stand up for us. And I said, even you in Nigeria, you Africans didn't stand up for us. I said, those of you in Senegal and Tanzania, you didn't stand up for us. And Allah made us Muslims the way he wanted to. And now that we are Muslims, you're going to tell us what we should do? I said, I owe you no explanation. And you don't owe them any explanation. What are you apologizing for? Where's my... Day? Well, you call it Anib Elijah Muhammad Anibal. I said, because Allah says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَرَمْنَ بَنِي Adam. Surely I have given an honor and nobility to all the children of Adam. That includes the honorable Elijah Muhammad. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. And Allah says in the Quran, هُوَ الَّذِي يُسَوِّرُكُمْ فِي الْأَرْحَامِ كَيْفَ يَشَاءُ And it is Allah. He it is that shapes you in the womb as he pleases. And then I explained to them. I said the reason we had to come through the door to honor Elijah Muhammad because of our slave history behind us that you didn't come help us out of. I said fear was put in us for the white man. Fear was put in us on the plantation. We couldn't raise our eyes and look at it. We couldn't stand up to him and look at him. I said we had a lot of problems before we could be real Muslims. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad and Allah knew it. It was Allah's plan. I said Allah had to pour fear out of us. Put courage in us. And then we could get the Quran right 
get the teaching of Muhammad the prophet correct, but we weren't even men correct. I said, and Allah knew that. So Allah had to empty us out and put courage and manhood back in us. And we had to come through the parent of the nation of Islam. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was our first father, and Sister Clara was our first mother, and we were born in the womb of the NOI. <laughs> but we outgrew that. We grew up. And then God sent us another womb, another environment. Respect the wombs that gave you birth. Be regardful of those wombs. And God sent us another womb, another environment, so we could be born out of. And for 33 years, he's been shaping us in that womb. 33 years. Now, if you can't walk on your own after 33 years, and you need to be put in a walker like a little baby, child, the mama put the child in the walker, so the baby don't bump into things and hurt his head and knock it. So Imam W. D. Muhammad had us in walkers. Just in the uh, community. American Muslim Mission. American Society. Executive Sure. Um, uh, monitoring team. This stroller, that stroller, this walker, that walker. Because we were bumping into things. Now once we learn how to walk, he said, all right, you don't need any more of those strollers. You don't need the executive sure. I know because I was a part of it. He got rid of it. You no need for it anymore. No need for any monitoring team. People are grown-ups, and they know how to walk on their own. Now, after 33 years, how many of you all were here from 1975? Oh, buddy, that's the majority. So who you need to tell you how to walk after 33 years of walking? <laughs> Nothing wrong with your legs. But I know what it is. And he told me, I ain't got to guess at it. He told me in no uncertain terms. He said, Imam Yahya, I want if in it three months before he died, I'm dri he driving me around in the car with him in Chicago. And I got this out on that table. I've talked about this. And I ruffled a few feathers among my friends. That's all right. It wasn't personal. And it's not personal. Respect the wounds that gave you birth. That bore you. And Imam W.D. Muhammad is the father, the leader of this community still to this day. How, what, how, how am I supporting that? After 1436 years, we say Muhammad the Prophet is our leader, and you are correct. We follow Muhammad the Prophet. Well, if we can say that after 1436 years, my Lord, surely you should be able to say it. You can still say it, and it ain't been two years since Imam Muhammad passed. You ain't got to go back 1400 years. You ain't got to go 14 years. Just a couple of years. So you ready to say, well, he ain't my leader no more. He ain't my, whoa, 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 hold up, brother. Hold up, sister. You say Prophet Muhammad is your leader? Yes. You follow Muhammad the Prophet? Yes, alayhi salam. And how long ago was that since he was here? 1,436, maybe 38 years ago. Okay. Well, you have been here since 1975. And how long ago has it been since Imam W. E. Muhammad passed? It hadn't even been two years. And he told me, he said, Yaqya, don't let this community go any other way than what I have set for it right now. I said, yes, sir. I used to be Lieutenant John 5X in the FOI down in Jacksonville, Florida. So y'all got a problem, y'all got a problem, not me. <laughs> He creates you, Rijal al when he said, many, countless men and women come from that leadership. We have Muslims all over this country growing and thriving. And let me say to you, I go all over this country now, and I was saying to my good friend Hakeem here, I told him, I said, all these naysayers, all these doomsday preachers, all these war, What's happening, people? What's going on? You ain't going nowhere but your neighborhood. You ain't been nowhere. You're on the internet. You don't know what the community is doing. 
I'm talking about that group that's on the internet. They don't go anywhere. I challenge them young ones up in Philadelphia play. Where the community, I say, yeah, where have you been in the community? You haven't been anywhere, you don't know this community. This community is thriving. It is making progress. New masjids are being built. One of our young imams, Imam Wazir Ali, is building the first masjid from the ground up in Houston, Texas. Dedicating it next month, inshallah, naming it Imam W.D. Muhammad Masjid. The first masjid built after the death of Imam Muhammad. New masjid from the ground up. They got two new masjids there. Basil Abdullah built one on the west side. New masjid from the ground up. Charlotte, North Carolina. New masjid from the ground up. Harlem, New York, where Imam Pacha is. Streets and blocks of homes and businesses. For a 16-story building up in the sky attached to the masjid. Four-story museum around the corner from the masjid. Streets on both sides of the neighborhood on 116, 18, 19. As far as your eye could see, ain't nothing but brownstones with grass in the yard in Harlem, New York. <laughs> we are growing and thriving. And if you ain't doing nothing, it's because you ain't doing nothing. <laughs> but don't put that on the rest of us. I just got back from China, alhamdulillah, two weeks ago. For what? To go get these nice Super 180 wool. I know you're checking it out. Super 180 wool suits. <laughs> but let me show you something. It says, you can't see back there in the back. I'll tell you what it says. It says W-D-M-G-V-B. It's our brand. W.D. Muhammad. <laughs> so he left us more than the Quran and Sunnah. <laughs> and that's continuing. Ain't nothing stop. We content. We cannot stop now. And don't you let nobody talk you into a malaise and talk you into being lethargic and talk you into being lazy. This community is growing in leaps and bounds. Young, middle aged, and old. It's alive and well. And Imam W.D. Muhammad will be proud of it. We just had a conference in, Ma in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Mali Conference, Quran Conference. Oh. Those presenters, young brothers and sisters, and some of us that presented, oh, I was sitting there going, oh, Imam Muhammad will be so proud of his sons and daughters that came after him. And we respect the womb that gave us birth. Nobody can talk about your mama, and nobody should be able to talk about your daddy. That's the same attitude you should have in the community. You don't allow nobody. And, don't, and, then, and in that group, and I'm talking to them all over the country, because there's a little small group of them, they were in Washington. They were in Philadelphia. They were in a couple other cities I was in. And they said, in one place, they actually said, well, you can't mention Imam W.D. Muhammad name in Juma. I said, you don't want me doing Juma then. Because I'm going to WD you to death just because you said it. <laughs> can't mention Imam Muhammad. That's like telling me I can't mention my daddy's name at home. What kind of stupid stuff is that? Somebody tell you, you can't mention your mama's name. I can? Why not? Well, you can't mention your daddy's name. Well, well why not? Who's na who, whose, name I, whose name I should call? Listen, when they tell you they don't, you can't mention him. Now, remember now, they didn't do this when the man was alive. Oh, no, they were cowards. Would have been roasted and grilled like that. But when they tell you, you can't mention Imam W.D. Muhammad's name in Juma or Talim. You know why they want you to do that? Because they want to mention their person's name. They want their sheikh to be the sheikh. They want their muallim to be the muallim. But I got news for you in the first part of this kutbah. I'm going to sit down. When I was in Saudi Arabia, and I got those pictures on that table out there, 1990 with Imam W.D. Muhammad, the contingent of us went there. This is in 1990. And Imam Muhammad asked the big sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz. Real sheikh, not a milkshake, real sheikh. <laughs> they call him Sheikh Ul Sheikh, Sheikh of the Sheikhs. Learned man. Had him under house arrest because he was too powerful for the government there. So we had to go to his home. I've, I've had dinner with him more than a few, few occasions. Now the reason I mention him, because see, he's the one the Salafis follow. The little junior, the little junior, junior shakes. He's the big shake. And he's passed away. May Allah forgive his sins and grant him paradise. But Imam Muhammad asked him a question while we were in his presence. For our sake. Imam Muhammad asked him, say, Sheikh bin Baz, 
What school of thought a medhad should we follow in America? He said, he spoke like this, My madhad! My madhad! What madhad? Lays a madhad fi America. No madhab in America. He said, don't follow any of the schools of thoughts that are out here established. He said, study the Quran for yourself. Study the life of Muhammad the prophet for yourselves in America and apply it to your circumstances in America. Now that's what the Grand Sheikh said back in 1990. Now I didn't need to hear that. And Imam told us, he said, I didn't ask him that question for me. I asked him that for you all. And I was a witness. And there was 22 of us on that trip. I ain't naming them. It was 22 of us. And I've been going all over the country telling our community what the Grand Sheikh said. Don't follow Maliki. Don't follow Hambly. Don't follow Shafi. Don't follow Hannity. Don't follow up. And he said, and don't follow Bimbaz Methab. He said, don't even follow me. Now this is a man telling us this who was answering the phone call from 18 countries all over the world while we were sitting there, phone popping up, ringing up the hook, people calling from all over the globe to get fatwas, religious rulings, and he was giving them to him on the telephone from his home while we were sitting there, and he told us, don't even listen to him. <laughs> so you little shaky shakes and similac shakes, you can't, you can't tell me anything. I heard what your big boss said. And your big boss said, Imam W.D. Muhammad was the leader for Muslims in America. Well, he's dead. No, he's not. See, you don't know the Quran if you speak like that. Allah says in the Quran, and I sit down, speak not of my servants as dead. They are alive, but you perceive not how they live. As long as we are here, He's alive. As long as we have people teaching his language and his knowledge, he's alive. And he told me sitting in his home on July 5th, I just come back from China and we were talking about imams around the country. Well, he was, I wasn't, I was listening. And he said, it was about a dozen of us at the table and he was cooking dinner. He cooked dinner because he told me, so I'm going to cook for you when you come back. And he cooked too, halal turkey and some corn that he left inside the sheath. Didn't take it out. Talk to y'all about that later. I'm going to be here this whole weekend, so Sunday, inshallah, we'll get a chance to elaborate on some of these things. And I hope you come back on Sunday, Talim, where I'm going to speak on the legacy uh, that Imam Muhammad left us as it relates to business and other things. I'm going to be right back here in the mess year. Bring all your questions, all the hard stuff. <laughs> bring all, yeah, for real, bring all the real stuff. All the chitter chatter, bring it. All the emails, bring it. All the talk, bring it. All the behind the back stuff, bring it. Bring it right here. And let's clear it up once and for all. Because most of the ones talking don't have a clue of what Imam Muhammad was about the last 12 to 16, 18 months of his life. I was there. Work with him like that. Personally. Close. Now one week passed that Imam Muhammad and I didn't speak at least three times a week, sometimes three times a day. And I was in and out of Chicago so much. And he told me, he said, when you come here, you don't be with nobody but me. Yes, sir. And that's the way it went. So he told me sitting in that home, in his home, for dinner at the dinner table, he said, most of the imams are not with me. He said, I only have a few of them that support me. You need to hear this. You ain't going to hear it from nobody but me. Because I was there. Can't nobody tell you this but me because I was sitting there. He said, Imam Yakya, you know who they are, don't you? I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, now, am I correct when I say it's only a few? I said, yes, sir, brother Imam, you are correct. And he said, you know them. You know who they are. I said, I know who they are. And he said, how can you tell them? He said, listen to their language. You don't hear my language, they don't follow me. <laughs> Allah. 
Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. With Allah's name, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. The praise and the thanks is for God. We thank him for the gift <coughs> and blessing of the model human person Muhammad, the honorable and noble servant and messenger of God. And what follows of that salute or that traditional salutation to the last prophet the seal of the prophets mentioned in the Bible as it is given in the Quran. I greet you again, brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum. <coughs> First, let me uh, express my appreciation and thanks to my good friend, Imam Furqan, for inviting me to be with you all here this weekend to honor our pioneers, uh, Juma, the banquet, and then Sunday Talim, inshallah. And also, uh, my good friend out of Jacksonville, Saeed. Where's Saeed at? Saeed. Saeed stayed after me and stayed on it to make sure I could come here. Now, I, I've never been in this masjid. This is my first time speaking with you all here. Yeah, I've been to Atlanta many times. Used to have a house down here. But this is my first time here. And uh, so I told you, man, further kind. I said, well, I appreciate the invitation. And we pray Allah that we can, the whole weekend, that we can share knowledge from our leader from the Quran from Muhammad the Prophet Prophet peace be upon him but knowledge and information and directives from our leader Imam W.D. Muhammad from his mouth straight from his mouth and God is sufficient as a witness that what I'm telling you is the truth <clears throat> and I also want to uh, say congratulations uh, to uh, Imam Mansur Sabri, he came, he's here today, I saw him uh, earlier, where, ah, there he is, Brother Imam, yeah, the Imam at the Atlanta Masjid, and I remembered him, and I was looking, I said, is that the same Mansur that I know? And when he came in today, I was like, Mansur, hey, he said, I'm the same one, Imam, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but his father, his father and I were friends, may Allah forgive him his sins, Ehab, uh, Sabri, may God forgive him his sins, and have mercy on his soul and grant him the paradise. He would be so proud of his, his son, Mansur Sabri, as we should be. Yeah, Allah Akbar. We want our young, the youth, to pick it up. Run with it and carry the ball further. But don't forget the wounds that gave you birth. <laughs> and he won't. I mean, that's the alhamdulillah. He, his father was old school like I was. And it's something to be said for the uh, nation of Islam. Now, uh, oh, yeah, let me give you this verse right quick. Uh, can you pass that bag to me, uh, Kasi, because I left my glasses there, and this print is a little small. Thank you, sir. This is chapter 17. You all who take your notes, you can write this. Uh, verse 23 and 24. Uh, and, and by the way, this chapter is titled, Bani Israel. The family of Israel. And the verse that I gave you, Laqad Karamna Bani Adam, is in the same chapter. Chapter 17, verse 70, make a note of it, where that's your Dalil for those who say you can't say honorable Elijah Muhammad. I was in Washington, D.C. last week, and the brother, a week before last, and the brother, I think he wanted to solid fear brothers. As soon as I finished the lecture, he came up to me, Oh, where's that verse at that you were referencing, Laqad Karamna? I said, chapter 17, verse 70. And he went, while I was sitting there, opened the Quran, looked at it, read it, closed the Quran, walked out the message. <laughs> he didn't even debate. There's no debate. God says all of us are honorable. وَقَدَى رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِئْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبْرَ أَحَدَّهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا فَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلٍ كَرِيمًا وَأَقْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ ذُلِّي مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَكُرْ رَبِّ الْحَمْ أَرْحَمْهُمَا 
kama rabbiyani saghira now the word arham arham if you have cuz i don't have time to read it so i'm going to give you my reference uh, the dictionary reference page 205 in this dictionary and it's from the word rahima which means mercy so when it, god extends his mercy on us and imam muhammad told uh, told us he said knowledge is one of the mercies of god one of god's mercies and so we are born out of many different wombs now I talked about the womb of the the mother talked about the womb of the community but do you know and i know you know it so i'm bringing it to your attention we are also born out of the womb of science and knowledge so you have to respect those wombs that gave you birth so if you are a, a mathematician what well that's the womb that gave you birth and that womb was also a mercy if you are a, a, a botanist or a chemist you were born from that knowledge womb and you have to respect that so i said to the to the brothers in washington and philly i say listen you all should also have the same enthusiasm the same respect and the same gratitude for your sheikhs your imams your muallims your teachers your professors that i have for mine and nobody's mad at nobody cuz somebody taught all of us something and somebody still teaching all of us something and no one knows everything and we say in the quran the words of god fawqa kulli dhi ilmin alim above every holder possessor of knowledge is the all knowing the most powerful one god who knows all and when the haji he goes around the kaaba he or she haji haji going around the kaaba and in the scholar he's the scholar learn it learn it man for real he says Allahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu. This is what he's saying. You don't understand it if you don't understand Arabic. He's going around the Kaaba. Allahu ya'lamu wa antum la ta'lamu. Allah God. It is you who know and we know nothing. So respect your teachers. Respect your teachers in the schools and the universities. Respect your professors and acknowledge where you get the knowledge. So a sister asked me, "Why you keep mentioning the Imam David D. Muhammad?" I said, "Cuz I'm not a thief." <laughs> I can't get up here and teach his knowledge, teach his insights, teach his ins 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 inspiration and the, and his perception of how he looked at things and then claim it like it's mine. You all would know I'd be lying anyway cuz you know I've been around here. <laughs> But I'm not like that. I have to acknowledge. So I told her I said when I mentioned when I read from the Quran, I said I got it from the Quran. When I quote from Prophet Muhammad, I got that from Prophet Muhammad. I said when I quote from books like from the dictionary Rahima, mercy, love, compassion, I get it from the dictionary of the Holy Quran. By Abdul Manan Omar. I have to tell you the source. So when I quote from Imam Muhammad or share knowledge from him, I have to tell you that's where I got it from. Now what's wrong with that? nothing you have to be honest so you have to have the same mind pay respect and if you do that believe me Allah will help you get more but if you are ungrateful for anything and the reason some of us or some of you are still so small because you won't show appreciation for what God has already given you in terms of resources in terms of knowledge in terms of friends in terms of parents in terms of children in terms of associate you won't show appreciation for nothing so you stay small your husband can give you sister plenty money clothe you dress you entertain you now don't get mad at me cuz i don't know y'all i'm just i'm talking now. This is, some of y'all need this i told you this is my first time here so if i'm stepping on some toes and your feet hurting that's just hey i don't know brother like they say, if the if the if the shoe, I'm talking to Susan now. If the shoe fits, you got to wear it. <laughs> Baby, it's a recession. That man's trying hard, and he's saying, "Look, I did all that when I could. I can't do it no more." You, what you mean? You can't. T you can't take me out every week, every day. <laughs> so are you watching the news like me? <laughs> the whole government is broke. <laughs> The country is in trillions of dollars. What well, a debt! Everybody got to tighten up. Everybody got to count dollars now. Look at it. I know we used to 
do that, baby. But I can't do that no more. Oh, you don't love me no more? It, like Tina Turner said, what love got to do with it? Ain't nothing but love? <laughs> this ain't got nothing to do with love. <laughs> this has to do with finance and economics. <laughs> and love ain't paying no bills. You can't go to the Georgia Power and Electric Company and give them a love note for your power. <laughs> they want money. So be grateful and thankful to Allah. And God says if you were to number, if you were to count and try to number his favor, never could you count those favors of God. And the problem too many of us have, we always talk about what we don't have instead of what you do have. Count your blessings. Every day above ground is a blessed day. Did you hear what I just said? You got up this morning, alhamdulillah. You're here for Juma. You're a Muslim in America, alhamdulillah. You know Allah is God, alhamdulillah. You ain't worshiping Jesus Christ is God, alhamdulillah. The white man is out of your brain as a savior, alhamdulillah. You ain't shuffling and bowing and scratching when you ain't itching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Listen, even LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bott have declared their freedom in that arena. And the white people are going crazy. How could he do that? Because he's free. It's, ca it's called free agency for a reason. <laughs> did you hear all the commotion? How could he betray us? Why did he leave? Why is he? And I'm going, wait a minute now. Are these, these are the same people that trade these brothers back and forth like they are commodities? Same people. And now the man is free to go on his own and he made a business decision. And what they don't like is the cooperation among the African Americans who realize their strength now. They're like, well, all these people making money on us, running up and down the court. Hey, we're going to team up together. We're going to win some stuff. This is in their mind. I'm, I'm putting it, I'm, I'm, you say, this has a reason for being in here today. All right? To show you gratitude and appreciation. Allah is helping all of our people and all these rich. do you know he's even helping I hate to mention his name but I but I just to, to give you the, the so you can see the help coming even to him he's helping even a crazy dude like Lil Wayne <laughs> <laughs> he's part of the group that's all he knows T.I. that's all they know 50 cent, that's all they know. So because of that horrible history behind us, Allah is even bringing up the worst ones among us. Bringing them out of poverty, helping their families come out of poverty. Now, it ain't all pretty the way they're coming out, but that's all they know. And we pray in time that they will conform and come back to their good senses like the great majority of us and use those resources to do something productive instead of destructive. So show appreciation for what you have. Say thank you that your husband is still there and ain't left you yet. <laughs> Just say thank you. You he ain't gone. You about you done drove him halfway out the door and he's still there. <laughs> Listening to your nonsense. <laughs> well, I gotta listen to him too. <laughs> well, thank our law, brother. <laughs> It's on both sides. Thank Allah, brother. She's still putting up with you. You half crazy. When she met you, you half crazy. You still half crazy. And she said, Lord, I know I got a crazy man, just like Pharaoh's wife. She said, God saved me from this crazy man. Pharaoh, that's in the Quran. So sister, just, just say, Allah, just give me patience to deal with him. I know he was nuts when I married him, and he's still nuts. He ain't changing, but oh, at, at least he paid these bills. <laughs> I got a nutty bill pill, but he paid these bills. <laughs> mm. 
You got to learn how to be patient and tolerant and deal with a lot of stuff because they say 85% of the American public crazy anyway. <laughs> and they even complain against President Obama. Talking about his words are too big. No, listen. He speaks on a 10th grade level. His words, I say he speaks on a 10th, well what does that say about the American population? <laughs> they operate on a 10th grade level or lower. So they're saying he can't reach the average person because the average person operating on 10th grade. Isn't that a shame what they have done to the minds of the people? Then when you get a smart man, you say he's too smart for the public. Well, we had a, a dummy for eight years. <laughs> That Lord has decreed that you worship none but him, as we conclude, and that you be kind and good. What Bill Wiley Dane it's saddened. Not just kind, but that you be good to your parents. You do right by your parents. Be kind to them, young brothers and sisters, and parents of the older. Whether one or both of them attain old age in their life. Say not to them, now listen to this word. Falata kullahuma uffin. Uffin. That's the Arabic word. Uffin. Uffin sounds like offend. So I believe that English word offend, offend, comes from the Quranic word uffin. U F F I N. Uffin. Don't say uffin. That's what the Arabs say. Uffin. Allah says, no, 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 no. Don't say uffin to your parents. Say not to them a word of uffin or contempt. Nor will that nor push them away, but address them wakulehuma kaulin karima, but address them both, fathers and mothers, in honorable terms. And verse 24, and out of kindness, Lord to them. Now look how God places like a bird. Lord to them the wing of humility. And say. My Lord, bestow on them thy mercy, even as they cherish me in childhood. That should be your attitude towards your parents. That should be your attitude towards the leader of this community, Ma'am W.D. Muhammad. Don't say, offend. He offend me. No. And Lord to them your wings of humility. What does it mean, Lord to them your wings? See, it's bringing to us the picture of a bird. The picture of a bird. Now, in concluding this, what happens when a bird learns, learns to flap his wings? It's ready to leave the nest. Ready to go on off on your own. So once y'all start flapping them wings at home, young brother, young sister, you ready to fly the nest. So God says, Lord, your way. Don't be up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Say, remember, your parent, Rob Biani. You hear Rob? I started this cookbook with Rob. Rob. So Allah says, the parent now, Rob Biani, he puts them in the role of the Rob. He's called Rabbi Alameen. He says the parent is Rabbi Ani Sadir. And just as I evolved mankind, when mankind was nothing but a little thing in his mind of science, he was a small child in the world of science. And I stayed with him until he evolved through science. And I brought him up from Flintstone to our paws and iPads and internet and cell phones. Eh? God raised man's mind up to that level. I brought him up from walking and crawling on the ground to flying in the air. Hard in the bird that can go, man can go hard in that bird. So I brought you to that point. Now remember, if I've done all these things for you, show your gratitude to me. Now your parent has done the same thing for you. If you had a father there, that watch you when you were crawling around on all fours and a mother watching you and looking out for you and changing you and feeding you and you couldn't even talk. You couldn't ask for what you wanted. All you could do was just holler out. Ah! And the parent knew exactly what it was. 
Now you have forgotten those days because you know how to flap your wings now. You are flapping on your own. I got my own house. Flap, flap, flap. I got my own car. Flap, flap, flap. I got my own job. Flap, flap, flap. I ain't gonna do what I want to do. Flap, flap, flap. Stop flapping your wings. Lower those wings. And remember there was a time when you were a little bitty bird in the nest of your mother and father. And you had not the power to fly out of the nest. So don't speak to them harsh. Don't disrespect them. And you might have gotten more knowledge than them. You may have more education. But it's, maybe it might have something to do with that parent making sacrifices. So you could do better than they are doing. So remember that. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار. Our Lord grant us the good in this life, the good in the next, and save us from the punishment of the fires of sins. Amen. The Karma Salat.